Welcome. Thank you for being here instead of having lunch. Yeah, I know it's hard. So yeah, today I'm going to talk about annotation processor. Uh, who knows our annotation processor here in the room? Please raise your hand. Some of you, not all of you. Right. So who I am? I'm an Apache Cassandra evangelist. Uh, I'm working for Cassandra. So why am I talking about annotation processor? Because I love this. Uh, let me show you why. So in terms of complexity, we have a pyramid here. So for common Java code, it's very easy, OK? Uh, a lot of, we have a lot of Java developer here. You have very few people who knows about annotation processor, because when I started using annotation processor, I couldn't find really good documentation even on internet. And then you have bytecode gurus, OK? People who are writing bytecodes, and there are very few of them. So we, here, the more you go up the pyramid, the more complex it is. Annotation processing is very old. It appears since uh, JDK 1.5. Okay. As I said, there are very few documentation. The idea is uh, you can generate source code at compile time. And why is it so interesting? Because of the, at compile time with generics, you have all the type parameters because there is no type eraser yet. Okay? And you don't need to have like a bytecode manipulation or AST manipulation abstract syntax tree. What you need to do is just to write plain Java code, which makes annotation processing more interesting than bytecode manipulation. And in fact, it is a kind of metaprogramming. You are creating source code to generate all the source code. Right? So it, it's quite abstract. But it's still easier than manipulating bytecode. How to generate source code? Many, many solutions. First, manual string manipulation. Of course, no. Nobody wants to do that. Right? Uh, a lot of people are using template engine like velocity. It means that you, you put a, like a create a public class template, and then at runtime, you just inject the parameters. The problem with this is your source code is very dirty because there is no import. Uh, every class has a, like a fully qualified class name. So it's not very beautiful. And recently, there is a new project called Java Poet. It is a library from Square, the company. It provides you um, a way to generate source code in a type safe manner with auto import Javadoc. So let's see a simple demo. Here I have my annotation processor, okay, which extends an abstract processor. So the idea is my, I have an, um, an entity, okay, and I want to generate a type safe DSL to query, to create the, the select query, but in, with a, a type safe, OK? So in my processor, forget about the init stuff, I say that uh, I want to intercept all classes annotated with entity, the annotation. And in the process method, I will just Fetch, OK, round environment, get elements annotated with the annotation. So I have a list of annotations. I filter them. I only take the annotation which is interesting for me, which is entity. And then I ask uh, the JDK, give me all the classes that has this entity annotation. I convert them to a type. So now I have a list of type elements. Okay, type elements is a list of classes, or a list of interfaces, or abstract classes. For each type element, I will now get all members. Okay? A member can be a field, a method. So I have a helper class, element filter. Give me all the fields in all the members. And then I only take the fields which has the add column annotation. Okay? 
Now I have the class and all the fields with the column annotation. Now I can start generating source code. Okay. So the idea here is I have an abstract select okay, class. I want to generate a select class for my entity. So the idea is, in the end, you have a select blah, 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 from blah, 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 where blah, blah, blah. So I, I start initializing my string window with the select. All the select clause will be separated by a comma. And then I'm using like a type parameters. So I have an abstract select and abstract where with the same idea. The string window of query is passed in, and here we are generating the where query. Okay. Now, in my processor, I want to generate the where class. So how does it work? I'm using Java Poet instead of manually creating the source code. Type spec is a builder, okay? class builder, the class name, public final, so public final class. The super class is my abstract where class. Okay. Then I add the method, which is the constructor. Remember, the abstract where has a constructor here. So I need to generate it. Public constructor. I have a parameter, which is a query of type string window. And in the public constructor, I just call the super constructor. I can add javadoc. Okay. And it is not enough, because in the where clause, I should generate also for each columns I have in my entity, I need to generate also a where clause, where ID equals, where first name equals, where last name equals, where birthdays equals. So to do that, for each column, I will just generate the where clause. So it works in the same way, method spec, Method builder, you give the name of the method. Public final, and the modifier, modifier. Return the where class. Add some Java doc. The parameter here is the type of your column, which is, for example, here the type is string, here the type is date. Okay. Add the statement. I am just adding the column name in the where condition and then return this. Select class generator. Well, same idea. I create a select class. Super class is the abstract select. Where is my abstract select? Here. And for each method, I generate the select. OK. Now let's see it in action. So I have all this generated for me. So this is in the processor module. Now in the demo module, I just create this user entity and item entity. Sorry, so zoom in. Okay. Now if I build, rebuild project, it will generate the whole stuff for me. So let's see. OK. And now, some test. User entity DSL. This is a generated class, OK? Dot select. So if we look into this generated class, it is very clean. You have the impression that this class has been created manually by some human being. But in fact, it is generated by Java Poet. So as you see, you have javadoc everywhere. So dot select ID, first name, last name, birth date. And on each column, you have also javadoc. OK. Select first name. You see, so very, very clean code. If we look into this generated select class 
Here it is. So the user entity select class extend the abstract select. And here for each annotated field, you have a generated method. And we are just adding the name of the column into the select clause, OK? And then where, where, where what? Now ID equals. As you can see, it is type safe. Because at compile time, I know the type of my ID, which is a long. So now in my ID equals method, I can only provide a long value. I cannot put a string value. The same for first name. First name is a string, so I, I need to put a string. Birth date is a date, so I need to put a date. And then generate query. Okay, now let's execute the test to see what is the generated query. Build. Oh, this package does not exist. Impossible. Compile. I have a demo effect. So the problem with annotation processing is that uh, the support for annotation processor in the IDE is, is not that great. It is fine with uh, IntelliJ. It is worse with Eclipse. So if you are using annotation processor, don't use Eclipse. Ah, it's true. OK, so the query here is, you see, the generated string is select ID, blah, 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 where ID equals 10, and blah, 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 blah. OK, so this is type safe. And now if I change, if I update the type, for example, if I update to UID, and I recompile, my Unit test will fail because I here it will complain of command line up. Yeah, it will complain because it expects a Java UID, and we provide a long instead, OK? So it is completely type safe. How to unit test the generated source code? Because uh, it is very hard to test something that is generated at compile time. So there are two strategies. First, if it compiles, it is a good indicator that your annotation processing is working. Otherwise, you will have compilation error. Second idea is we have a framework called Google Compile Testing, which helps us to trigger the compilation process in plain Java. So let's have a demo here. Processor. Test. Here we are. I, I declare an abstract processor for testing. 
So this processor is very similar to my demo processor, okay? It intercepts all, uh, all the classes with uh, entity annotation. But what it does is just, it executes an assert. An assert which is a lambda, okay? Assert okay is a just a lambda, functional interface. And in my test, Here is my unit test. I'm putting some logic in my lambda, set exec, and then I'm calling compile testing framework to load the class, the test class, to process and to compile. And in my execution logic, I will call my where class generator, which return me a type spec, and then I compare the output, which is a string, with an expected code. So where is my expected code? This is what I expect to have, okay? If my code generator is working correctly, this should be the expected output. So, and then I compare. So imagine that I put an error in this, for example, I put plus, 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 and if I execute this, it will fail. Empty, why empty? MVN test. Okay. The test failed because there are some comparison. Okay. So here I have an extra plus 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 character. So it is very possible to test the generated source code using this framework. And that's all. So you can find the um, the test, the demo project here. And you have also another real framework using annotation processing, which is Achilles, which is an object mapper for Cassandra. So basically, I'm just generating the, the query DSL at runtime, uh, at compile time, sorry. Any question? No? Thank you.